in Moldova Woo! with my homies. Hey. We're gonna go do TEDx. What's your name? Syra. What? Hey. What's your name? Ross. <laughs> my name's Snoop Dogg. <laughs> <laughs> TEDx thing. Very cool. This is where the TED talk will happen. Wow, this place is awesome. <laughs> what? Where are we? We're spinning around. Whoa. Spinning around video. <laughs> TEDx Moldova will be tomorrow. What? It's pretty awesome. Check it out. <laughs> hey Natalie, look. What's up? I'm in Moldova. TEDx. This is my friend. She told me I can't ask any questions because if I do, they won't hear them, so I can't ask about dogs. But I can do massage trains. And this is my rapper <laughs> friend. She's a rapper. <laughs> Here. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Let me know now. <laughs> you laugh about massage, but it was one of the best TEDx moments. Are you serious? It was one of the best TEDx moments I had. Okay. And we had massage after one day of TEDx. Dude. And it was awesome. Oh, I, I'm actually planning my whole 18 minutes as a massage train, so. <laughs> In Moldova with my homies. Hey. We're gonna go do TEDx. What's your name? Syra. What? Hey. What's your name? Ross. <laughs> my name's Snoop Dogg. <laughs> what? <laughs> Video. <laughs> I was like... What? What? <laughs> So there's no Wi-Fi, but we just figured out my PowerPoint here. This is good. Oh yeah, beautiful. Oh, I can see what happens next too? Uh, no. I can see both? No, uh, you will see this uh, from the big screen. But you'll see both, okay. Uh, yeah. Okay, cool. So TEDx Moldova, just taking a break. I'm up next, look at this cool venue. Three stories high. It's pretty nuts. Un scriitor, un antreprenor, un director, un cofondator la mai mult de 10 startup-uri. Doamnelor și domnilor, Ricci Norton pe scena TEDx Chișinău. Hey guys, Moldova! Yeah! My family and I, we also gone a, uh, we've gone on a road trip for the last six months. We started in New York, got in a car, kind of went up and down the United States all the way to San Diego, into Mexico, up the whole Pacific coast, into Canada, and then back down through the states a little ways. And we got this idea, can we go on the road? We, we never knew where we were gonna stay at night. We just camped. Sometimes we slept in our car. <laughs> Sometimes we found little hotels. It was awesome. But this was the experiment. Can we go on the road and not use any money that we've ever had, no savings. Can we make money on the road and every dime we spend is made from our cell phone? And we did it. Uh, my wife and I, we've been married now for 14 years. When we got married, we had only known each other for less than two months. From the time we met to the time we got married was less than two months. People said we were stupid. We were. <laughs> I'm here to tell you that stupid is the new smart. Smart people love to defend what is done right now because it's working and they don't want to be wrong. Um, I actually got my start in outer Mongolia. In Mongolia, there's a bunch of goats. They, they, they have cashmere. It's that really soft, fine material. I was actually 24 when I started this business. Let's say I was 25 just to make the numbers easy. If I'm gonna wait till I'm 65, and my goal is to help other people, not to make money as a status symbol, but as a tool, as a way to facilitate opportunity for others. Am I gonna wait till I'm 65, 40, I'm just trying to do it backwards. Okay, 40 years to do what I really wanna do? 
And so we decided that we are going to live our lives in the present. Stuff might happen in the past, whatever. I can't control the future, whatever. But I can do something right now, in this moment. Gavin, this is our baby Gavin, we named him after his uncle, and he brought so much joy into our lives. And kind of filled that hole that um, his uncle had left. One day Gavin got a cough. Just a little cough, a little baby cough. And we took him to the doctors. They said he'd be fine. But the cough, it kept going. We raced him to the hospital. And we thought, you know, we're going to be out of here just like we always are. Um, But it didn't turn out that way. When we got there, they did all these tests. And they kept us there for quite some time. And they finally figured out that he had caught a disease. And it was a disease spread by a cough called pertussis, also known as whooping cough. And and we did all the things you would do as a parent. We prayed. (laughs) We shared what was happening on a a blog and told the world to, to think positive thoughts and send love our way. And I remember one night... Um, the nurse came in and um, she said, you need to stay the night. And of course, we always stayed the night. But she was kind of telling us, you know, you, this is serious. Ugh, this is horrible, but <clears throat> they gave us a choice. They said, look, he's going to die, but legally we have to bring on a crash cart and revive him. And it's going to be violent. And he's not going to make it anyways. Do you want that to happen? Yeah, I give him every chance that he has. And as we thought of it, as we prayed about it, as we thought about these things, we realized that he was definitely dying. He was going to die. These were his last moments. And it would be better to hold him while that happened than um, to have him go through this violent process. And uh, I remember they took out all those wires all those tubes out of his little body. And um, I, he got all puffed up with medicine. And I just held him for a moment, handed him to my wife. I wanted her to have the time with him. And I put my hand on his little heart. And we sang him lullabies. And I just felt those last beats as he slipped away. Uh, y- your worst nightmare as a parent... And what you don't think of is when you leave the hospital after this happens, you leave empty-handed. And the world never felt heavier. I remember the sweet angel of a nurse who said to my wife, my wife didn't know what to do. What did she do with the baby? What did she do with it? And the nurse said, you want me to cradle him? And the nurse took the baby and we walked out, holding hands. On to the next thing. And it was horrible. Worst thing we could experience. I know a lot of people experience a lot of crazy things. It all hurts. No matter how big or small it is, it all hurts. And um, he's buried in uh, Laie, Hawaii, right there with his uncle. They share the same bed of sand. And... I realized again, life is short. Someone asked me, what did you learn from this experience? From your brother-in-law passing away, from your son passing away? And if you were to remember anything or write anything down from this presentation, this is what it would be. This is why I flew here two days (laughs) to get here and tell you this one message. I call it Gavin's Law, which is live to start, start to live. So many people are walking around the world and they have no idea what's going on in their life, why they're here. Fine. But they do have ideas. And when those ideas come to them, they tell themselves, that's a stupid idea. I can't do that. Someone else should do it. Or it shouldn't be done at all. But when people embrace an idea, regardless of how silly or crazy it may be, They are infused with energy and enthusiasm, and they start to live. 
live to start, start to live. So this idea of, hey, the smartest people in the world are telling you that your idea is stupid, whether that could be your, your parents, your family, your friends, or it's just all in your head, or some professor that's a dream killer, whatever it is, you will learn, as I have, that success happens embracing those stupid ideas. And so we have to find this middle ground. How do we go from this crazy idea, people telling us we're insane, and finding that center? So I want to share some things about that with you. And the real question is, why do people tell us that we're crazy? Why do we tell ourselves that we're crazy for thinking differently? Is it because we're wrong? Or could it be that the collective consciousness of the world at that moment in your life are wrong? And you were the one inspired to lead. Why not? Here's a quote. A lot of people thought it sounded stupid. Twitter. First he told me it was a stupid idea and then he agreed to come on board. Where did that come from? Pierre Omidyar. eBay. Only a toy. The telephone. That was his father-in-law that told him that. They all thought it was a stupid idea or didn't make sense. Spanx. Anybody know here what Spanx are? I'm wearing them right now. How do I look? And Steve Jobs famously quoted this phrase, stay hungry, stay what? Stay foolish. If you go into the lives of some of the greatest humanitarians, people that have changed the world, people that lead people, you go in there and you see they were called names. Fools. Stupid. But we look back on their lives and go, they were so smart. If you want to get smart, start asking stupid questions. I'm serious. A lot of people say, I can't do this stupid idea because I have no time, no education, no experience, no money. It's not an excuse. No one had all those things at the same time necessarily. You got to do it now. It's no excuse. Um, there's a guy named Stephen Covey. Wrote a book called Seven Habits. Mentor of mine, his son, Stephen M. R. Covey, helped ran, run this global business. He asked me to work with him at one point, teaching something called The Speed of Trust, which is a book. And I said, I was in my 20s, and he said, I said, aren't I too young? I said, what about the gray hairs? I'm getting gray hair now. Do you like that? I do. My wife thinks it's cool. And he said this, Richie, some people say they have 20 years experience. When in reality, they only have one year's experience repeated 20 times to get success. Then the success becomes smart. People start stealing your ideas. If you're afraid of looking stupid, you're holding yourself back. What's your idea? What's the idea that's pressing your mind right now? That is the idea you need to embrace. That is the thing you need to do. Make a mess and love it. So how... Do you start something stupid? Serve, think, ask, receive, and trust. You can, if you can serve one, you can serve two, and ten, and a hundred, and a thousand, and a million. It grows. Start with one. When? Now. I love acronyms. So I created one for the word time, which is today is my everything. When you start something stupid, when you start a project, it has a beginning and an end, it can fail, it can not fail, whatever. You can start something, you can pivot, you can change it, whatever. One thing builds on another. You, it's project stacking. One builds on top of the other. Like that tree. You plant it, you leave a legacy for those that you leave behind. And it all starts with a kiss, right? My, my wife and I are the stupidest, craziest people you'll ever meet. Probably not, but maybe. And it's okay. Because we want to be able to look back and say... I lived a life without regret. And you are going to start stupid things, and they're going to fail. And it's going to hurt. And it's okay. It was a learning experience. And you can live a life without regret. So I challenge you, my friends, to lean in to stupid. And that's an idea worth spreading. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. That was very emotional. Can I also Thanks, give brother. It? Yeah. A long hug like that one. That was so good. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people all over the world that they 
are afraid of looking stupid. How to fight this fear? Uh, I have a friend who, who likes to ride like these massive waves in Hawaii. And he broke his leg on a huge wave. The, the surfboard crushed his leg, broke it in half, and his femur. And he ended up going back surfing again later after he got a pole in his leg. And I said, dude, are you crazy? Like, you're going to die, you know? And he said, no, I love surfing, so it's worth it. So what I'm saying is, to overcome any fear, including the fear of looking stupid, if your why for what you're doing is more important than the hurt you might feel if you, if you fail, you will do everything you can. Like a mom trying to feed her baby. She'll do whatever it takes to protect them. You've got to fight for your dreams the same way. Thank you so much. Yeah, yeah, you're Thank welcome. You so you're welcome. Much. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. Whoa. Nice. Yeah, and of course, because we're in wait, Moldova, wait, wait. just some of the this best is, Moldovan this wine. Is the best Moldovan wine. Wait, can I tell you something? Please. I don't drink wine, but I know you guys do. Can we give this away to somebody cool out here? Yes, we can. Okay. Uh, so first person is yours. Up, okay. First person to come. First person on stage. <laughs> Enjoy, brother. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. This is awesome. Oh, there we go. It's a speed. It's a speed. It's a Because that was like really, really inspired in the middle of the speech. Like about two years ago, I was almost at the age. I always was the first person, but that broke me down a little bit. And I had the choice. And I see what you're like. You've been through so much, and you're still moving forward. And that's inspiring. Thanks, brother. That's inspiring. Yeah. People need to know that. Yeah. You know, it doesn't matter who I'm working with. As long as there is hope, there is a chance to change everything. Yeah. Dude. You should be out there, bro. That's a good, that's a good Someday I will. Someday I will. I can feel it, yeah. That's awesome. Today is the day, like someday. When you had those problems, do you, was it the first thought of yours that I'm amazing now doing it? Or no, first no. Thought, it's just hard. It's just one step at a time. It's like we either hate our lives forever and it's ruined, or we make a choice to turn what, that tragedy into a triumph. So sometimes you have to, sometimes you're like, what's the meaning of all this? There's not necessarily a meaning. You assign meaning to it. You know what? Whatever it means, I'm gonna make it mean this, and I'm gonna live a better life. What, what can I learn? Yeah. What yeah. Is my lesson? That's right. Oh, That's right. Take a photo of course, here. please do. Wow. What happened to your finger? Okay. Каждое выступление для меня — это очередной день рождения. Я рад поделиться и отпраздновать его вместе с вами. So this is thread and nails. Is that crazy? So when I was a little boy, there used to be a toy called Teddy Ruxpin. <laughs> and finally, Teddy Ruxpin has come to life as Ted X. Ted, what's up? Thanks for the good times. <laughs> and that's a wrap. Goodbye. Goodbye, Ted X.